Welcome. It is another Sunday night and I am here again. You are here because obviously you want to do good in IT. So you came to do your, um, see all the paper tools. Now this is 2012, right? This is like way back when. If you, if you do all the papers and you reach all the way back to 2012, you, you try and, uh, you trying to destroy this exam on many le many different levels. But more than likely, <laughs> the people that reached this past paper are the ones who actually like want to do IT or computer science later on in life or something like that. Because most students will just do the last three or four years of past papers and call that job. But I don't care. I'm going to make sure that I have the last 10 years of past paper answers available on my YouTube channel for free and you can't stop me nobody could stop me so welcome to sunday night live every sunday night i am live working out past paper well when it comes closer to exam time i'll be doing a lot do a lot of past paper work and whatnot but when it's not exam time i do cool things in technology like build robots and program and build do do techie stuff yeah 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 All right Alright, let's see who's on the inside. Giovanni is on the inside. Faith is on the inside. Anybody else? Anybody else just joined? Da, 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 da. Jared here. Alright, Jared is my mod. Jared, uh, 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 I hear a birdie say today is your birthday, boy. That's a... That's a... That, that's a fact? Or is that... Is that fake, um... Fake information, false information, false news, no. Alternative facts. Is it all is it alternative facts? No, it's not it is uh -huh. hey boy, Jared. Sweet sixteen? Okay no. Nah, nah, nah. You're definitely older than that. Probably um Yeah. Yes, now you're gonna be pulling up in a in a in a civic. All right, y'all. All right, time for the start. Hey, Luana, how are you going? Everything cool? Let's go. Hi, my name is Mr. Charles from Make It Simple TT Educational Solutions and I teach information technology. I have classes at the CSEC level, at the CAPE level, information technology classes for adults who want to learn technology, workshops, seminars for teachers, seminars for companies, anything that makes information technology simple for people who need to use it, we do it. All right. All right, nice to have you all on the inside. Let's get ready to go. Well, to rumble, go rumble, whatever you want to say. Um. Yeah, happy birthday. All right, so today we're hitting January 2012. Why are we doing January 2012? Because as I told you all, I'm doing all 10, 10 years of past papers. Going back to whenever. If you don't know how to access those past papers, let me take you to my website. My website is makeitsimplett.com. That link is in the description. It's in the description. And you go, well, if you're on a phone, if you're on mobile, same thing, you go to the video section. Go to videos and then you'll see CSEC IT videos. And when you go by CSEC IT videos, um, Grammarly might give you an ad, but I mean, I'm out of eat. And then you will see paper two answers. And when you click on paper two answers, you'll see I have all the answers for every single year for the past, so far for the past nine years, because we're in 2012. By 2011, I'll be done by next week. 13, 14, 2021. Oh, cool, let me just go Oh, no. No. Um, yeah. Let's see how 2015, 2020. 2019. I see what's up there. Um, 17, 17, 16, 15. Um, yeah. We 
you have all, all the past papers here. So yeah, go to CSEC, um, make it simple, tt.com forward slash videos, and then you go into CSEC IT videos. I also have theory videos that show you all the thing about the theory, algorithms and problem solving, all that there. SBA, if you're struggling with your SBA, I cover almost every single skill that you would need to know for your SBA. Um, multiple choice, I have nine multiple choice videos that will teach you everything you need to know about multiple choice. Paper two, we'll have the 10 years and then paper two answers by year. Um, at this point, these are specially done videos for the last, um, just the, the past few years, because some people just want the short answers for per question. So I have the um, answers by question for the last two years, because most people will just do the last two years of papers anyhow. All right, that's us there. Um, so this one, Zane, how can you access the crash course? If you go to make it simple, tt.com forward slash register, you will see the crash course there available. So if you go to the website, Zane, like here, go on the website, and you will see a, a button on top called register. When you click register, you will see the registration form. You choose lessons for CSEC or CAPE student, and then you click next. And when you scroll down, you fill out all the information at the bottom. You will see um, crash course CSEC IT online only 100 TT or 20 US, and you will be able to get access to the crash course video. You submit that between the hours of 8 to 5 on a weekday and your registration will be processed and then you will get access to the crash course. And trust me, that crash course has every single thing that you need to know for your whole IT life. When you're ready to study and you go through our crash course, you'll realize everything in the syllabus covered. None to worry about. So yeah, uh, let's see who else is on. All right, I've seen some new people. Kevan, Andrew, Brian, Ramona. Ramona, I remember you. And Rachel, right. There you go. The diagram in figure one illustrates the main components of a computer system. Um, name each device labeled A, a to F. Each device labeled A to F. All right, there you go. A is the sends data to the CPU. A is definitely why this thing looking so dim. Is my brightness down? Oh no, yeah, it was down a little bit. Okay, good. Yeah, A is definitely input. Receives data from the CPU, definitely output. What happens inside the CPU? Let's see. Fetches and decodes instructions. That will be the control unit. Performs calculations will be the ALU. We will give it the we'll give it the long name. Arithmetic. Logic unit and then e is stores programs currently in use that'll be ram random access memory now i don't think that they will add they will require to write out the whole thing but that's okay and f would be secondary storage All right, it's a basic diagram that they usually always ask for, but you, um, they always bring it in a different way each time. They always bring it in a different way each time, and it kind of confuses children sometimes. Like, a lot of the times, people will lose track about this thing here and think that, okay, this is, normally you would see, um, RAM is on the outside, but sometimes they put RAM on the inside of the CPU because... RAM works so closely with the CPU. Would they accept primary storage for E? Um, they should accept primary storage, yes. If you want to put primary storage, primary storage, 
that would be acceptable too if you feel like it but that's basically the, the breakdown for that diagram there part b the hardware specification of a computer system includes the following information blah here's the information there's line one and there's line two and line three indicated indicate the line number which provides information on the optical drive optical drive tbt when last you use our optical drive we use a cd or a dvd anytime recently like that would be interesting i had to take out the optical drive from my laptop the other day all right indicating line i'm also provide information for the optical drive and the processor optical drive is line three because you see in dvd here all right so that's line three and processor will be here because you see Intel Core i550. Um, Intel is a processor maker. That's one clue. You see 3.2 gigahertz as a next clue. Yeah. That would give you the processor. And then explain why the access time for a moving head disk drive is greater than the access time for a fixed head disk drive. It's not only to us anymore, like the inner workings of a hard drive. You don't really need to know the inner workings of a hard drive anymore. Like the the, the scepters and platters and all those sort of things. You don't really need to. But the answer for this would be that the um a fixed head drive there are there there are less moving parts. Where there are less moving parts, they have faster response time. But that part C they wouldn't ask you the inner workings of a hard drive anymore. Another thing they won't ask you is number two, because that is binary. So what do we do when we see binary now? Please spread the word because there are many children who don't understand that when you see binary, Giovanni, tell them, tell them what meme they are, tell them what meme they're gonna get. Tell them, tell them. Because up to this week, a child messaged me and asked me um, on Instagram, so binary, and he said, well, by the way, follow me on Instagram, link in the description, right? Yeah. And um, follow me on TikTok too, if you're, if you're so, like, if you really like, if you really like technology, you, you, you might, you might find joy in following me. You might find joy. If you just want one in IT, that's okay. Just come back on YouTube every time and you'll get all these stuff for the, for the exam. Get your one and move on with your life. But if you really like technology, you, you might want to follow because I'll talk about cool things in technology all the time. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we leave out our binary part there. So we're going on to number three. Um, write the numbers one to seven on separate lines on the answer booklet using the information in table one, matching number of the device. All right, so we match in input devices. This is a cake question that they love to bring. Like, it's really cake, right? So a joystick would be used for playing games. So we'll put that as joystick is B. MICR, magnetic ink character recognition. As used on checks. Is there anything about checks? Checks, 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 checks. Bank worker reconciling checks. So that'll be D. Webcam, that's for viewing something or seeing somebody. Consult consultant participating in video conference or so video should be webcam. That'll be G. Touch screen, touching the screen. Who would need to touch the screen? Uh, um, customer seeking information at a kiosk. A kiosk is like one of those um stand up things in the airport where you could like print your boarding pass and you could touch the screen and guess up, right? So a kiosk would be touch screen C. Digital camera, digital camera, a reporter researching a story. No, I don't know. Like, what researching a story has to do with that digital camera? Because to me, researching a story means you had to go on the internet and you had to get information or you had to ask people questions. If it's a reporter capturing a story, then I can understand. That's why it's digital camera. So, digital camera is really F. So, that's the only kind of weird one is because a reporter researching a story is not going to require a camera to research the story. But then again, we just have to say this. How is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados allowing CX to do this to us still? Yeah, we just had to say, all right, cool. It's all right. We good. We good. 
Barcode reader will be definitely a point of sale at Akasha because they have to scan beep, 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 beep. So barcode reader will be A. OMR, optical mark reader, that is for scanning marks on a piece of paper, usually a multiple choice. So let's see if we have anything. Teacher grading multiple choice responses. So that will be E. And this here is so much cake that you get diabetes for a question like this. If you mess up a question like this, you're, you're kind of... Um, your licks, your licks. But if you if you have problems with it, you know where to go. Make it simple tt.com forward slash videos. You'll see I have all of this explained in the theory section of the videos. I, I can't tell all enough. I have all the videos sorted out on my website. So you're good to go. Alright, describe one use of biometric systems stating clearly where they are used. Where would be biometric system used? all kind of places all kind of places but it'll just be easy to just say phone phones okay fingerprints fingerprints is like the easiest way to, 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 to you could say government offices all that stuff hey um javish put it to link to my tiktok there on the um on the chat i dream had a link to my tiktok let me just um let me just kindly copy this link and put it in the description. How long am I supposed to update this thing? TikTok. Oh gosh. They give me one long redirect link by Javish Boy. Hold on. That's not. I'm trying to go to my TikTok to see if I could um. I could put the link. How oh, you just do this? Share, 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 share profile, share, share. See, see, see why I've exited TikTok for? There's real, there's real fight here on the um on the bro on the browser. But anyhow, right here, yeah, moving back here. Yeah. So, yeah. So, where do I use phones for fingerprints or Face ID? Right. So if you see if you see a place, um yeah Javi should work in it. Just I can't get the um I can't get the short link for it. I want to have the, the link where they make it simple TT next right after it now, but I think I got it once, but I'll figure it out. Right, so where they use phones for fingerprints, right there. Yeah. Next one is one type of data that is collected. The type of data that is collected. I don't know. Fingerprint data. Oh, ho, they wanted to write phones, then fingerprint data, and then one benefit that over traditional methods for collecting data. Okay, okay, okay. Um, the benefit over traditional methods is it cannot be easily forged or duplicated. Yeah, forged or duplicated. Right, that's the answer. Um, if we could put the place that it is used, uh, you probably could put the place that is used, yeah. Yeah, because our phone would be considered like a place, so you could say place that it is used. One benefit of a traditional method, efficiency. You had to explain that efficiency in the one. If you're going to say efficiency, you had to get, you had to get something beside it. You can't just put efficiency full stop. A lot of things IT makes more efficient, but there's a reason why it gets more efficient. So you might have to, I don't know, you might have to, Looking on that, right? All right, for each of the following applications, state whether it's also. Hey, by the way, like the video, like the video, click the little thumbs up that looks like that. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, but you're just here taking any DIT, subscribe to the channel and you'll get notifications of whenever I go live. Most likely it's going to be on Sunday nights all the time, but I upload, I upload in videos every single day of the week. So, you might just see a video about um fast papers or IT or theory or whatnot. So make the lady likes match up to the um thing. Uh, that's the least you could do for all this free free goodness that you're getting. And subscribe if you're not subscribing. Like, click, subscribe. Right here. Um Yellow one I yeah, speed because you don't have to go through multiple documents to see who the person is. Yeah, that's that's good. That's acceptable. 
All right, so let me go to number four. Number four. For each of the following applications, state whether its associated media is text, hypertext, audio, or visual. Um, VoIP is audio because this is clearly voice over IT protocol. <clears throat> VoIP. <clears throat> IRC is um, visual. Because IRC is Internet Relay Chat. Internet Relay Chat. This is still on the syllabus, I believe. Maybe, maybe, maybe not on it too sure. WWW, that is definitely hypertext. Because hypertext transfer protocol is what you use for to transfer things on the WWW on the World Wide Web. If you have no idea what those things mean and you're now seeing it for the first time, you may want to consider heading to my um my website and have a crash course that i did in april that has all the notes for every single section of the syllabus every part from start to finish a whole eight hour video actually seven hours and 59 minutes somewhere around there but a whole eight hour video and well, i think you have a half an hour break for lunch or something so but anyhow yeah that video has everything that you need so if you want access to that video yeah click the link in the description or one of the mods will post it there for you and that link will lead you to register and it's only 100 tt two bucks a kfc and you are able to have all the notes i have for kfc i mean not for kfc for what's called this thing for it yeah because because i know for covid or they were just home, struggling with a textbook, trying to connect to a Zoom meeting that wasn't working out very well, and you don't know what you're studying in IT. Well, this crash course here has been recorded, and you have everything that you need inside there. Everything. All the notes, exactly the notes that you need, and not a whole of things in the textbook that you try, you gotta try to figure out what to learn, what not to learn. Trust me, I know exactly what on the syllabus. I've gone through it so many times on this channel. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Because, yeah, feet. I stand again. Stand again like butter right now. Easy. It's easy. All right, write the letters A to G in your answer booklet and state each letter the correct technical term required to complete the sentences in the paragraph below. All right, it's an internet thing, right? So let's go. David's father wishes to advertise his used car business on the internet. David advises him that he can create a website that consists of several interconnected uh, websites is a set of interconnected web pages. So a set of web pages. The website must be placed on a something computer. Usually when you build a website, you have to put it on a server. So they'll put server computer, but server computer is a kind of clunky statement to be like server computer. That's, that's something kind of server computer. It should just be a server, but that's okay. We ain't really beating up too much about their phrasing. Um, Persons wishing to access the information on the internet must use an internet something on their computer to navigate to the particular website. Anytime you navigate into a particular website, you're using a browser. Um, they must either know the address of the website called a something something locator. What word do we know about? Uniform resource locator. Or must use a search something. What's a common word that comes after search? Engine. Search engine to find a website. When they find a car that they are interested in purchasing, they can something the relevant information to their computer. If you don't, if you get it to your computer, to your computer, you are downloading. Right? You can download the relevant information to your computer. How? Uh, Nice and easy. The question looked like it was going to get you some trouble, but you were just like. Yeah, we you know. Good Dutch. What's that, Giovanni? What you was going to put save for Gina? Download is the technical term. Saving is. Saving is something different. Saving would be like files or something. Download once it once again from the internet, you're downloading it. They, they, they wouldn't get you safe. All right, 
preventing unauthorized access to a computer to computer facilities can be achieved by locking doors to computer rooms. State three other methods that can be used to prevent unauthorized access to computer facilities. State three other methods that can be used to prevent unauthorized access to computer facilities. Three other methods. Unauthorized access to computer facilities. All right, so we already know we could lock the doors. You could also hire security guards. We can't say lock and key, so we could say CCTV cameras. And then you could say key cards. Um, yeah. Right. Now, what will tend to happen here is that you will think about logical security. Remember, to have two, two types of security, logical and physical. They said that will prevent unauthorized access to computer facilities. They didn't say prevent access to the computer. If it was preventing access to the computer, then passwords and encryption and all that stuff will be necessary. But you have to remember, facilities is physical. So that's why you could only use physical um, restrictions. So security guards, CCTV cameras, key cards, um, key cards or keypads. And you will get away with biometric. Um, biometric locks. Because biometric locks, you could physically put your palm print or something and it will open the door. So biometric is half logical, half physical. Um, some questions, you could lean it and use it as logical if you explain it because it's actually checking your, like the ones and zeros that your palm print or your handprint gives. Or you can lean it the next way, which will make it physical because you physically have to touch it. I believe on the syllabus, they have biometric put down as a physical um, access restriction. But there are some papers where you clearly see that they want you to put it as a logical access restriction. So you just have to keep track of that because CXC does just kind of, mm, yeah, they'll find a way. Yeah, there, there are two types of um, access restrictions faith. Logical access restrictions and physical access restrictions. Access restrictions. Access restrictions. All right, cool. Thing is, this thing is between term data integrity and data security. All right, integrity is correct slash accurate. Data security is um not corrupted or untouched data. Or you could say um not in the wrong hands. Right, data is secure when it's not corrupted or it's not in your wrong hands or it's untouched. Um, integrity would be correct or accurate data. Yes, you want you could say protected data. Yeah, protected data would be cool. Explain it on firewall. A firewall is a logical software or device that filters packets that come into or leave a network. Now, there's a three mark question, so you ought to be able to pull out your three marks here. So your first mark is clearly showing that it's a logical software or hardware device, because you could have a hardware firewall or you could have a software firewall. Your next mark will be filters packets and um, that come into or leave a network. So those are three marks there. Always remember, when you see a three mark question, ask yourself, does my answer give me three marks? Does it have enough to get three marks? Because you would think you're right, only real, a real, real best answer. 
and then you'll only get two out of the three and then you stand up like impossible but really and truly you didn't write what was required to get the three marks so try to try to make sure that you do what it takes to get the three marks okay identify two unwanted incidents that a firewall could prevent um uh remote login Um, it could also prevent worms from entering. And uh, a firewall could also prevent um, access to bad websites. Yeah. You have so many things you could put there for a firewall, but I'll just put those three because those are three easy ones that will like easily come to your mind. Um, remote logging in, yeah. It could prevent data theft. A uh, firewall. Uh, um, why does a, fi a firewall does it prevent data theft? Does it prevent you from to prevent data theft? No, it'll prevent you from logging into the network. It won't prevent you from taking the data out of the network. I don't think they'll give you data theft now. You had to explain that. You had to explain that in like RL. I don't know. You had to explain it in a, at a high level for it to make sense. I can't, I can't really say they'll prevent data theft. All right, next question, number six. Oh, this question here. Yeah, I remember this question here. This thing's about turnaround documents and um, turnaround documents and filling out forms and all them kind of thing. Uh, yeah, this kind of question. Yeah, when you see all that wood, all them woods to read there, eh? tell yourself, get yourself in game mode. Get yourself in, in, a, in a gear. Get yourself in a gear. You gotta understand what's going on here, or else you'll mess up this question real bad. So let's take it, let's take it from the top. Um, they place in, um, orders... To buy parts for a car, right? Um, so the mechanic in the auto shop submits a request parts on a parts request form. So there's a form that the mechanic has to fill out and gives it to the owner of the shop. So tell yourself there is a form. It looks like a piece of paper and the mechanic will fill out the information on the form. And then submit that to the owner. Tell yourself that, right? After that now, the owner of the shop will take that form, collates the request and creates a document called um, Pro Forma and puts it on a flash drive. So he creates a document, let's say something, um, parts.doc, right? So now this, this, this thing here, a bunch of these docu these pieces of paper have been collected and they have been put into a document on a, on a flash drive. So it's on a flash drive. Was there asking you, Javish, if I know any, um, be mad, no, what? Uh, Javish, what? Uh, I doubt. If I knew one, I would have to, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. If I find one, I'll tell you. All right. The flash drive is sent to the car parts dealer who creates a record and a file on the hard drive. So the flash drive, let's go to some place with a hard drive. And it goes to the auto shop owner and the 
they use the data from the file and they print a document called invoice order. So now we're going back to our, our actual document document with words because it's printed. Follow me here. We're still going, we're still going. Don't get vexed yet. Do not get vexed. I know all now so by the time all they, after all they read step three, or they just be like ah! Are you running why are you running just work with it take your time understand the question don't beat up time not gonna like run out on you the invoice owner is sent back to the owner of the, the invoice order sent back to the owner of the shop and then the owner of the shop then reviews the invoice order and returns the confirmed invoice order to the automobile automobile pass it off Right? So what you want to do is you're trying to figure out what happened here. So it returns our convoom in, um, invoice order, which is our next piece of paper. This one is our next piece of this is the this is the, the first step for the same paper here is what is sent there and then they send back that. Right? So there you go. Using the letters A B C above identify three letters that represent forms of documents that are hard copies well look at that i just literally drew out the hard copies for you so this is a hard copy this one is a hard copy this one is a hard copy so a is a hard copy c is a hard copy d is a hard copy b can't be a hard copy because it's on a flash drive so easy marks here a c d ah okay all right, that wasn't that hard. We are alive still. We are alive. And we get a whole three marks there. So, don't think the world is against you. One, one form or document that is machine readable. Machine readable means that um, you could put it in a computer. Well, um, B is machine readable because it's on a flash drive. Do you see that? Do you see that? It's on a flash drive. So, that means a machine could read it. So, therefore, B. Hmm? That was hard so far. Are you dead yet? Did, but did you die yet? No, you're alive and you're going to make it. All right. Using the letters A, B, C, or D, identify one form of document that is an example of a soft copy. A soft copy means what? Not hard copy. You don't have it in your hand. So we could clearly see that the hard copy one is the flash drive. The soft copy one is the flash drive. So that will be B, right? B, soft copy. Now, a source document. A source document will have information that comes directly from a person. The only thing that comes directly from a person here is that the auto mechanic um, submits a form directly. So the auto mechanic fills out the information. So that'll be A. Ah, ah, see? See how it's making sense now? And you have answers to the question because your brain has not gotten afraid of the question. Your brain said, question, I am going to beat you. And the question has no choice but to submit. So now we're going to a turnaround document. Now a turnaround document, half of the information is already pre-printed and the other half you have to fill in. So. The first one can't be a turnaround document because this was totally filled out by the um, the auto repair, the mechanic, right? So the first one, definitely not. Hard. So which one of these is a turnaround document? Half of it is printed and half of it is written. Well, we only saw one um, thing that is printed, which is the, um, the owner using data from the file prints a document because they use using data from the file so that means it took data from the file and print it so that means half is printed and then half is not so therefore c would be a turnaround document all right so if you're if you're if your brain struggling to understand how turnaround documents and all that stuff work you're definitely going to need this in your life see this right here yeah this right here this is I explain turnaround documents and source documents and different types of documents and everything and how it all works. So questions like these won't kill you.
So if you need to get need get that information because obviously you've never seen it before, or obviously it's not in your textbook, or obviously you don't have it in your notes, then that crash course has the notes that you need. But I'm not telling you any more about that because you know what you have to do. All right, give one example of a piece of data found in A but not in C. This one is the tricky part of the question. I admit that this part of the question is tricky, but we could figure it out. So let's see how do we figure out tricky questions. When we see these tricky questions, I ask kind of said, like, what are they asking? I have no idea. Don't be like, NANI? 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 You don't have to be like that. You don't have to be like that. So what is in form A, but not in form C? All right, in A has the, the mechanic is filling out the number of requests for parts. So the mechanic filling out the information for the parts that they want. But form C is our invoice order. So it has to check to see um, what parts are available or how much the cost is going, or how much the, the, um, the amount is going to be. Because this here will just be the information for one set of parts. But when you put all of the parts together, what will happen? C will have the total. So something that is in A, but not in C, would be like the name of the part. Because remember, form C don't really care about what the name of the part is. Form C is just trying to get the the amount of things I need to get and how much it's going to cost because that's what invoice is about. An invoice is just about um the part ID and the number. But the mechanic, the mechanic, because the source source information will have like um four Bridgestone tires, but on on the third on the C document, it will just have four tires and the price. Because the more you go down, the more you collate, the more they're going to um what's the word? They're gonna uncut down the the amount of the middleman now, right? What will be on form A, form B, and form C? A, B, and C would have the A would definitely have like um the name of the part, the part ID, and that's all. You won't have the cost of it yet. B would have the name of the part and the part ID. C would have the part, name of the part, and the, no. C may, may not have the name of the part, it might just have the part ID. So we could say it will have the part ID. All of them must have the ID of the part, because if they don't have the ID of the part, how are you going to calculate how much it's going to cost? So. A, definitely, the, the mechanic will fill out the name of the part and the ID. B, he's going to put all of the parts and parts IDs together. So, yes, they will have them there. And C, they will have the part ID and the cost. So, that's definitely what you will have on C. And then the last one, what will be found in D, but not in B, that's easy. Because in D, you have invoice order. So, that's definitely going to have the cost. In B, it's not going to have the cost. B is just going to have the parts and the amount. So in D, but not in B would be the cost of the parts. And that's, that'll be the answer for this question. This is one of the toughest turnaround document, um, source document questions that they have, but you could make it out with, um, with a few marks. At least you ain't coming out at zero. You might get about a six or seven, and six or seven is better than nothing. Could you say all would have some information about the parts? Yeah, Luana, um, they could all have information about the parts. Yeah, they will give you that. That is um, that's fair game. That's fair game. They 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 can they can take that away from you. All right, good. So that was what I've been what section one is right. All right, so now uh spreadsheet question. 
the ICT unit of our college has prepared the following spreadsheet showing the internet usage of four countries. Steady range of data containing the percentage of the population with internet access for the four countries. The range of data. When you have a range of data, you have a start cell and then you have an end cell, right? So the range of data contains the percentage of the population with internet access. Percentage of the population with internet access, the range of data is this range right here. This range. And that's clearly going from C2 to C5. Ah, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Write the function to find the average population of the four countries. The average population of the four countries will be the average of all of these numbers here. So we have to put equal sign average. And we're going to say average of B2 to B5. Average. Ta-da. Um, what formatting features are applied to the population data in the four countries? Population data, right. This, this format is called comma. Comma formatted. Was that Giovanni? If you, if you put AVG, no, AVG is an antivirus. Do not put AVG. The word is average. No, God, please. No, no, no. Imagine you lose a whole mark because you put AVG when you know the word is average, but you're just too lazy to write down the word average, boy. That, that would be, that would be disgusting. That would hurt, that would hurt a lot. So, try your best. Put the whole word average. The formatting feature here is comma, because it was formatted with comma. You might also get number. But comma is what they're looking for. They've always asked that, and I don't understand why, because to um to do that. The data in the spreadsheet has been sorted. Stay the column heading for use for the sorting. If it was sorted, did it, is it sorted by the country J T G B? Nope. Is it sorted by population? Two million, one million, seven hundred thousand, fifty thousand. Yes, it's sorted by population. So population. Ta-da! Donna Lisa, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you noted too. I'm glad you noted. All right, the text good access is to be inserted in the action needed column. Action needed, which is here. Um, if the percentage of, of the population with internet access is greater than 40%, otherwise print poor access. So when, when all you see the ifs in Excel, or else be like, eh. Because I don't know why, why children have problems with ifs, but I'm here to save your life. So that, well, not save your life, but to save your Excel life, where you'll learn how to do an if. And you learn how to do the if properly. So, equal sign if. Even if you're really struggling in life and you have no idea what to do, but you know you have to do an if, just put equal sign if. That is a mark. That is a mark. Like, just, just do the if. Do the if. Equal sign if. I'm going to see. If the percentage of the population with internet access, percentage of the population with internet access is this field right here, this one here. So this is C2. So we want to say if C2 is greater than 40%, right? So what are if you have three parts, you have the, you have the statement, of what you're doing then you have the mark the you have the condition right now all you're asking me if if i serious i'm telling you yeah when your mark cxc is realized you did give you one mark for knowing that you have to use a if one whole mark one whole mark 
just to say, yeah, I know I have to use that if. Nobody ever tell you that? Nobody ever tell you that? Just write these statements and you'll get the mark one. So sad, so sad. Well, you're welcome. Right, so you write it, right, you write if. Right. Now, once you do that, then you want to print the words good access or poor access. Now, because it's words, you have to put it in quotes. If you do put it in quotes, you'll get an error message. So, when you put them in double quotes, whatever words you're printing, you need to do that. And then you get your third mark is this being in the correct order here. So, that is one, two, three. So, if the condition, what you're going to do if it's true, what you're going to do if it's false. That's all. Like, this is the true one here. And this is the false one here. So, if whatever you're checking for, true or false. That's, that's, that's all you do for if. And if you didn't know that now you know and if ever 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 you bounce up a question with a if and you say i never do that if in my life and you're on this live right now the lie again lie 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 so just just tell yourself you know how to do a if now right you're welcome all right next number eight the motor vehicle department of a company maintains a database with two tables that show that shown below to store information of vehicles and their owners all right so we have a vehicle and we have our owner all right cool great there's information all over database questions usually have the um, information in like two tables what type of data is entered in the reg field? Where is the reg field? Right here. Ooh, I wonder what does that look like? Well, it looks like the date. Date slash time. All right, when you're doing databases, get on your head. Date slash time. Date slash time. That's what you're looking for. State the primary key in the data vehicle. Primary key is a key that cannot be duplicated or cannot be um, copied, or you can't have two of them, right? So the primary key in the vehicle table will be something that doesn't have any duplicates. Do you have a duplicate registration number? PMM, CB, GNN, HBV, right there. All right, so clearly the registration number will be the primary key. No, the primary key would be like, a man asks, what is our pseudocode? Who put that? T and somebody just asked for a pseudocode. Impossible. Oh my god! He because he broke. Oh my god! Zane, you come to the right place, boy. You come to the right place. Zane, just for you, I go down pause the work I doing. I didn't I didn't plan to do a segue right now. I didn't plan to do a segue. But I just gonna let you know. Just gonna let you know. Go to my website, make it simple tt.com. Go to videos. Go to CSEC IT videos. I'm telling you this for your own good. Go to CSEC IT videos. And then you will see a tab called Algorithms and Problem Solving. Algorithms and Problem Solving. There are eight videos here. Watch all eight of them for your own good. For your own good. Watch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Watch all eight of them. All right? Soon as this live finish, whatever you're going to binge watch tonight, don't go and binge watch it. Go and watch this now. Because you may have a problem on your hands, but I have the solution here. All right, Zane? So just letting you know that I'm here for you. 
I am here for you. Alright? So, it's yours. It's yours. Alright. Back to my regularly scheduled program. Right, the primary key for the vehicle table will be reg number. Registration number. Alright, cool. Um what is um what is the engine CC of the vehicle owned by the individual organization with tax number three hundred? Right. So we have to we have to do the mapping of the table, right? Because we're trying to figure out what the relationship will give us. So what is the engine CC of the vehicle owned by the individual organization with tax number G three hundred? So G three hundred is here. G three hundred is linked to PNN fifteen hundred, right? G three hundred, PNN fifteen hundred, and then we're going on this table to find what PNN fifteen hundred is, and then from there we want to find the engine CC. So the engine CC for this one is two thousand, right? So basically, you just have to follow the follow the table. Find the thing that you want here. Check to see if they have a, a relationship. Find the relationship and then map it. It's a lot simpler than it. Like the question makes it look kind of difficult, but it basically you following a table, like following breadcrumbs. All right. Write a query to show all um. All Toyota vehicles registered in two thousand and eight or later. All right, when you're writing a query, um, as I always recommend you do the the SQL way because I'll make it clear for the examiner. So you have to select from and where. This makes it easy for you to understand what you're doing and makes it easy for the examiner to follow what you what you're checking for. So they want to show all Toyota vehicles registered in 2008 or later. So where do you find Toyota vehicles? We find it in the vehicle table. So we want to select the manufacturer and we want to select the registration. That's the two fields that we want to check for. So we want to say manufacturer. And then reg, reg right? So I want to get the manufacturer and the registration from the what table? From the vehicle table. So I'm going from vehicle. So I'm selecting manufacturer and registration from vehicle table. And where is what I'm looking for? Where registration is greater than 2008. And the and is important, and the manufacturer is equal to what? Is equal to Toyota. Ta-da! Right, whenever you get a query, and they ask you to write it, this is the surefire way to get it correct. There's no way you could get it wrong when you do it like this. If you write it in other ways, like, um, registration greater than 200 and manufacturer equal Toyota. You could just write this line here alone, eh? and it's possible that this may be what will get to the marks. But sometimes, based on my observations, these questions come for two marks, three marks, and then four marks. And if you write this and you're trying to get four marks, you wouldn't get it. So what you might have to do is just go for the go for the six one time and just hit it, and you will definitely get the marks. So don't um don't hold back there. All right, a report was generated for the vehicle table and the records are grouped by type. State the name of another field that could be used to group the records. So the type, um, whenever you want to group something, you have to look for repeats in the, in the, um, in the table. If you could find repeats in the, in our, in our field, then you know you could group it. So type, you could, you could repeat it because you have motor car repeated here, motor car repeated here. You could have, um, yeah, those are repeats. So when you group the reports, it will group. 
But they said another one besides fecal. No, besides um by type. Besides type. So we want to find another field that has repeats. Let's see if we have any repeats here. Do we have any repeats in um engine CC? Yes, we have our 2000 repeated here with our 2000 repeated there. All right, so that means we could group by engine CC. We also have our 1492 here and our 1492 here. So we could use engine CC definitely to group. We could also group by manufacturer because we have Toyota here, Toyota here. Then you have, so once you have Toyota and Toyota, that's clearly you could do a repeat. So you could use engine CC on or manufacturer. Okay, so engine CC. Or manufacturer. Right, I don't want. All right, if the vehicle table is sorted on registration number, on the registration number field in ascending order, what is the engine CC of the vehicle at the top of the sorted list? So we sort in by registration number in ascending order. So that means small to large. So if the vehicle is, so, is sorted on the registration number field in ascending order, registration number here in ascending order, that means we have to start with CBB, which will be first, right? Because C is the first letter of the alphabet. So They could trick you and you could be like okay yeah write the um write the code but they want to know the engine cc of the vehicle at the top so that means we gotta look at the cbb cb cb 1200 vehicle sorry why did i see two b's i don't know why oh because this one have hbb everyone have two letters after this except for this one anyhow cb 1200 matches the engine cc of 125 so the 125 is what we're trying to to write down so we're going to write down 125 that's that's a lot to do for one mark but sometimes sometimes it's one mark sometimes it's not one mark but that's okay nice okay let's go to where the air is rare because this is where the fun begins because when the algorithm starts and headache will start to start to gear off. This, this is what it, this is what tonight's meme was about. When you start off, um, when you do the, when you do the paper, you'd be like, yeah, 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 paper going good, and then you reach the last few questions, and you're like, come on, brain cells, don't fail me now. We could do this, and you had to get your brain cells to assemble, to get to get things to work out. Yeah, so let's go. All right, use the algorithm below to answer the questions that follow, right? So this is not Pascal. Um, this is an algorithm. So this is not Pascaling. Copy and complete the trace table below. Okay, so let's see what this trace table is telling us to do. First thing is we have A and B. A is equal to 2, B is equal to 10. So we're starting off by saying, all right, A is equal to 2, B is equal to 10. That's the first thing that happens. Then we have while A is less than B. We have to ask the question, is A less than B? Yes, it is. So therefore, we are going to try to do what is inside this, this here. This little block here is what we're going to do. Because this is what the while loop is asking us to work out each time. So the while loop is saying, all right, work this out. With that said, what we're actually going to do is work it out. And it's going to say print A or B. In our trace table, you don't have to worry about what, what the prints are. You don't really have to print anything. The trace table, and it's actually what the output would be. But you already have time for that. You have B divided by A. B is equal to B divided by A. So that means take what's in B, which is the 10, and divide it by 2. And take that answer and store it inside B, 
whatever the space wherever is B is holding, right? So whatever B has, you'll take 10 divided by 2 and put it in 5. I mean, 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and put it inside B. So you get the 5 there. Did A ever change? No, A didn't change. So A stays at 2. Doesn't matter, right? So now what will happen is that the while loop is going to say, hey, I finished doing that part. What, what, what's next? Check the condition to see if the condition is true. When you check the condition to see if the condition is true, that's you looping, right? So you're checking to see, is A less than B? And you'll be like, yes, A is less than B. So now we have to do the whole thing again. But this time it's not 10 divided by 2. It's 5 divided by 2. And 5 divided by 2 is going to give you 2.5. And then you're going to check to see if A changed. A never changed, so A stays at 2. And then now, our problem is going to happen where CXC didn't give us enough space to fill out the information. And we have to ask the question, How is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados, allowing CX to do this to us still? How? Oh. But we just add an extra, an extra box because clearly when we loop again, is A less than B? Yes, 2 is less than 2.5. So we have to do division again and the division is going to be 2.5 divided by 2. And 2.5 divided by 2 is 1.25. And our A stays the same, it never changed from 2. So when we reach to the loop, it's going to say, hey, is A less than B? No, it's not because 2 is not less than 1.25. So therefore, we done there. Trace table unlocked. Yeah. Um, Zane, trust me when I tell you. Watch them videos I sent for you. Yeah. Um, Gregory, I understand what you're saying. If it were Pascal, it would be. But they said this is an algorithm. They didn't say it was a Pascal program. So if they said that it was a Pascal program, then you would have had to use the rules of Pascal, which is when you use div, it will round down. Exactly. Yeah, but they said it's an algorithm. So if it's an algorithm, you have to calculate it like maths. Thanks. Remember, these children are not supposed to know Pascal. Right. Um, write an alternative operator for div if real numbers were used. Right. So we can't um um we can't use we can't do this because this is not Pascal. Gregory, you're not understanding what I'm saying. I'm telling you that these children are not supposed to use Pascal. So they are supposed to treat it as an algorithm. And the question said, use the algorithm below. So we are doing it as an algorithm. Um, and if CXC listed it as an algorithm and then asked the questions about Pascal after, that does not um that's not really a good look. If if they wanted it to do it as Pascal, they should have say the Pascal program is still below. Because if they were actually doing it as Pascal, you would have had semicolons here and semicolons here and semicolons here. But that's enough of that. Um, using any two of the numbers 10, 12, 14, 16, and 22, write one example of each of the following logic operate, operator symbols and state whether the result of the example is true or false. So, any number you want to use, any number you feel like using, you could just be like, 10 less than 12. True. Ten greater than twelve. False. Ten not equal to twelve. True. Ten equal to twelve. False. Now, I just seen that you could have used any one of these numbers here, 
But we really don't have time to go through. Let me like, okay, I wonder which number to use, boy. Maybe I should use this one. Maybe I should use that one. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just used 10 and 12 all the way through. What they're really testing is if you know this means not equal to. So you just create, and this, this is really the, the hardest one. This is not equal to. This is greater than. This No, this is less than. This one is. This The greater is this one here. This one is less than. And this one is equal to. All right, that's basically all that, all that. Can, right? Look how, like, ask yourself this question. A whole eight marks again for that, you know. Eight marks for you to just write down some some greater than or equal to. And you just kind of be like, marks, boy, you know what coming now. You know what coming now. Let's rack up them marks and run with it. Don't ask no questions. Don't look back. Don't ask anything. Just, just move on. All right, number 10 is clearly a Pascal question. Pascal. Eh. Pascal, Pascal, Pascal. Pascal, Pascal, Pascal. Aries. Eh. That's not how to get you so this would be. Number 12, write the algorithm to perform the following task, prompt for a letter. All right, so they say write an algorithm to, to, to do the following task. So we could do this because it said algorithm, All right? So we're going to watch this one. I'm going to say we could do this algorithm to prompt for a letter. Print. Enter a letter. Right, remember, prompt is you writing something to the screen for somebody to put the information in. So you're going to prompt them by you are going to put it on the screen and the user is going to see it to know they have to put in a number, right? Read the letter into a variable called check. I'm going to say read, open brackets, check. Right, so that means you're going to, the command that you're going to use is read, Check. Okay. Um, Giovanni, you could um, you could write the whole pseudocode if you want to know. <laughs> but they just ask the write an algorithm to perform the following task, and they break it down into pieces. So what you're actually doing is writing the whole thing in pieces, but you don't want to um. Yeah. Zane, why is in there? Your teacher was teaching your binary. For a while before she didn't know you have to do it. No, God, please, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Right, so now we have to do the um if the letter is equal to A, then I'll put the word good. So in programming code, I put in the control statements in, in capital letters because it will show that you will um you will you know what you're writing, right? So if um check is equal to A then I put double quotes. I should I push it. You could put double quotes or single quotes. Then print good. Right? Now basically all you're trying to do is show that you know that the if then else is what you so the thing is two marks, so they're clearly giving you one mark for this one, one mark for this one, and three marks for this. 
Why are they giving you three marks? Because one, you have to know you have to do a if. Two, you have to know what's the condition. And then three, you have to print it out. So you need to know you have to use a if. You need to know that you're saying check is equal to A. Then print good. There is no else. They, they, not all ifs need to have an else. Sometimes it could just have if then. It doesn't need to have an else. Follow me? Right? And that is the end of the test. So, big man thing. Zane, I ain't lying to you. If you're not too sure what you have to study, or you're not too sure what what is on the syllabus and what is not on the syllabus, I guarantee you that, that our craft my crash course has exactly what you need to study and the things that will come on the syllabus and the things that you need to know. I guarantee you that. So if you're really struggling and you're like yeah, yeah, you can't keep your head above the water because you don't know what to study, you don't know what to study. Yeah, you might want to check that out. It's just a video. And you could watch the whole eight hours, or you could just watch the part that you need to watch. But it covers the whole syllabus from start to finish. Everything that you need to know. Yeah. Um. Oh, you're done, sure, that already? Okay, cool. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, well, that's the day, you know, guys. Um, that's it for tonight. That was 20, 2012. So we have 2011. And we have uh, 2011 May and 2011 January to do. And I, I good there? I real good. Who's that there? Aliyah, so are you saying that Pascal isn't on the paper anymore? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Where's the video with the whole syllabus? That we asking um, Donna. That's a that's a crash course that I did in April. But you had to pay to access it. I have a video that was go through the whole website. Like if only like legit, if you decide to go through the website and you see all the videos I'd have there. You would be like, if CXC gave all the new syllabus already, yes, yeah, CXC gave all the new syllabus like two years ago. Oh wow! Ah, ah, this this hurts in my heart a little bit. It hurts in my heart a little bit. And right, when you go on the website, there is uh, and you go to the theory section, you see the first video that I have is CSEC twenty twenty changes to the syllabus. So since twenty eighteen. We have known that the syllabus was going to change. And they gave out that syllabus to teachers to make sure that they're teaching the right thing. Since 2018, I had the new syllabus and I've been preparing classes for the 2020 syllabus. And inside here, we'll tell you everything that's on the new syllabus and the things that you need to change. So go to the website, go to the theory section. First video you will see will be the changes to the syllabus. Make sure you're studying the right thing. But I also have another video that goes through the whole syllabus from start to finish. I can't remember where I put it. It's in the SB. Um, it's somewhere inside here. Yeah. I oh, know. I think it's inside here. Yeah, it's inside theory. It's somewhere inside the theory videos. But, oh, this one here. A detailed journey through the C-Sex syllabus. Right. Go and watch this one too. This one will give you a detailed journey through the C-Sex IT syllabus. And will let you know what you need to know and what you don't need to know. And if you realize that I have plenty of stuff that I don't know, I have some of these theory videos here that will show you things. These are like literally what I teach in class. But I also have a full, 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 full crash course that goes through every single thing that you need to know for the whole of um, IT. Just letting you know. Was I even hurting your head over Pascal? <laughs> yeah, you do really. You do need to learn Pascal. The only time you need to learn Pascal is the only time you need to learn Pascal is to do your SBA program. That's if your if your teacher requires you to do it to do your program in Pascal. But after you write a SBA, you don't need to see Pascal again ever, <clears throat> ever. 
No Pascal and me, boy. Tell me how Steven lies, yes? It's years, it's two years now, this all of us change and, and teachers still still don't know. That's that's hurt my heart, boy. That's hurt my heart. Yeah. Who's this person? Gavin, you're stuck at your database SBA. Well, you know what I'm going to tell you, right? Go to the website and go to the SBA section and you'll see I have all the all the tools that show you how to do your database SBA for different types of SBA. Like, like I don't know if I'm saying it the wrong way. Am I saying it the wrong way? Go to my website, makeitsimplett.com forward slash videos and you will see everything that you need there it is right there i have all sorts of free content that has helped many thousands and thousands of students pass csec it and even get ones even if they didn't know a thing before exams so we good there all right so yeah the link is in the description javish was posting a link thank you very much javish you are ever faithful and ever um ever on point right y'all so next week for sure um i go on there try your best and don't let anybody Later.